Dr. Amber, and today we're tackling two high-yield GI conditions that the NCLEX loves to test on, cholecystitis and pancreatitis. Let's start with cholecystitis, which is acute or chronic inflammation of the gallbladder. This typically occurs when gallstones block the bile duct. Bile, which is stored in the gallbladder, backs up and that gallbladder becomes distended and inflamed. Bile helps digest and break down fats. So when bile can't flow, fats are not digested properly. So what factors cause cholecystitis? Well, the most common cause is a high fat diet because it stimulates gallbladder contraction and bile release. Other risk factors to remember for NCLEX include the three Fs, female gender, fat or obesity, and 40, which is an age greater than 40 years old. With cholecystitis, clients will typically report right upper quadrant pain that radiates to the right shoulder. Remember, the gallbladder is on the right side, so the pain is on the right side. The pain typically flares up after fatty meals because fat triggers that bile release. We will also see a positive Murphy sign, which is worsened pain when the right upper quadrant is palpated during inhalation. Other findings include indigestion, nausea, and vomiting. We'll also see steatorrhea, which is fatty pill stools from poor fat digestion since the bile is not breaking down the fat properly. Finally, clients will typically have fever and an elevated white blood cell count from inflammation and infection. So what are we going to do for these clients? We start with diagnostics. An abdominal ultrasound confirms inflammation or gallstones. If the client is stable, we manage supportively with IV fluids, antiemetics, and analgesics. If the client is unstable or supportive care fails, a cholecystectomy or gallbladder removal may be needed. Remember, cholecystitis can be very painful. During acute episodes, keep the client NPO because every bite triggers bile release, which squeezes the angry gallbladder. Anticipate the administration of IV analgesics. NSAIDs like Ketorolac are typically given for mild to moderate pain and opioids for severe pain. Finally, administer antispasmodics like dicyclamine to reduce spasms, which relax smooth muscles like the ones in the gallbladder. With cholecystitis, hydration is critical. Administer IV fluids and antiemetics like on Dancitron. If nausea and vomiting are severe, insert an NG tube for decompression. And for chronic cholecystitis, dietary teaching is key. So remember on NCLEX, clients should eat high fiber, low fat foods. So avoid fast foods and fried foods. They should also eat small, frequent meals instead of large ones. And if the inflamed gallbladder ruptures, bacteria can spill into the peritoneal cavity, causing peritonitis and shock. So we should monitor clients for signs of peritonitis, which include a rigid board-like abdomen, abdominal guarding, and rebound tenderness. We'll also see systemic findings such as increased heart rate and decreased blood pressure. So remember on NCLEX, peritonitis findings like a rigid abdomen are always a high priority that requires immediate intervention. So after a laparoscopic cholecystectomy, there are specific interventions to encourage healing. We should start by ambulating the client as soon as possible. This relieves shoulder pain caused by trapped CO2 gas used to inflate the abdomen during surgery. That CO2 gas irritates the phrenic nerve and causes severe right shoulder pain. Walking helps the body absorb and expel the gas more quickly. We should also encourage deep breathing exercises to prevent atelectasis and monitor the T-tube output closely and report any purulent drainage to the provider. And discharge teaching is key. Clients should be instructed to resume normal activity such as work within one week. They should gradually reintroduce fats to the diet as tolerated and clients can typically shower as soon as one day postoperatively. If surgery isn't indicated, gallstones may be removed via lithotripsy or ERCP. This allows direct visualization and stone removal from the bile duct. But remember, keep clients NPO for eight hours before the procedure and keep them NPO until the gag reflex returns. And closely monitor that client for perforation, which presents as abdominal rigidity and is a surgical emergency. So now it's time for our first NCLEX quick check. So let's pause to answer these questions. How is cholecystitis pain described? Typically, right upper quadrant pain radiating to the right shoulder. Remember, the gallbladder is on the right side, and so the pain is on the right side. So what intervention reduces shoulder pain following a cholecystectomy? That's early ambulation. This will help absorb and expel the CO2 gas used during the procedure. 
Finally, what findings indicate peritonitis? That's abdominal rigidity and rebound tenderness. Anytime you see this on the NCLEX, it is an emergency that requires immediate intervention. Now, let's switch our focus to pancreatitis, which is inflammation of the pancreas that can be acute or chronic. So what causes this? Well, pancreatic enzymes activate inside the pancreas instead of the intestines. This causes autodigestion, so the pancreas literally starts digesting itself. So what causes this? Typically, cholelithiasis or gallstones, chronic alcohol use, and even that ERCP procedure we just talked about. So what findings will we see with pancreatitis? We'll expect severe left upper quadrant or epigastric pain that radiates to the back. We'll also see nausea and vomiting and bruising. So why does bruising occur? Well, it's caused by leaking pancreatic enzymes that digest tissue and blood vessels. This causes internal bleeding, which presents as bluish discoloration. Specific bruising we will see include colon sign, which is bruising to the peri-umbilical area, and Gray-Turner sign, which is bruising to the flank area. Finally, labs will reveal elevated pancreatic enzymes like amylase and lipase, especially with acute pancreatitis. So remember on NCLEX, for clients with pancreatitis, we want to limit GI stimulation to reduce enzyme release. So how do we do this? Well, NPO status is non-negotiable because every bite and sip triggers pancreatic enzyme release. We should also insert an NG tube for decompression and administer proton pump inhibitors like pentoprazole to decrease acid secretion, which reduces pancreatic stimulation and autodigestion. For comfort, position the client sideline with their knees bent, otherwise known as the fetal position. We should also give IV opioid analgesics for pain and antiemetics as needed. And finally, administer IV fluids for hydration. Widespread damage by pancreatic enzyme release can cause severe systemic complications. These enzymes can damage the peritoneal lining, resulting in peritonitis and shock. So monitor closely for that rigid, board-like abdomen, abdominal guarding, rebound tenderness, and systemic findings like fever, tachycardia, and hypotension. These enzymes can even spread to the alveolar capillary membrane in the lungs, which can cause ARDS, or acute respiratory distress syndrome. So monitor closely for hypoxemia, dyspnea, and tachypnea. We should administer oxygen and prepare for intubation as needed. Autodigestion of the pancreas causes glucagon to be released, which raises blood glucose, resulting in hyperglycemia. So administer insulin as needed. And do not forget this one on NCLEX. Clients with pancreatitis are at very high risk for hypocalcemia. Digestion of lipids in the adipose tissue causes the release of free fatty acids that bind to calcium, causing hypocalcemia. So what will we see? We'll see a positive Schwastek sign which is when the cheek twitches when tapped. We'll also see a positive trousseau sign, which is a carpopedal spasm when the blood pressure cuff inflates. So how do we treat this? We should administer IV calcium gluconate. This will replenish calcium levels. For NCLEX, we must teach clients to prevent the recurrence of pancreatitis. Clients should be instructed to avoid alcohol and nicotine. They should eat small meals high in calories and take prescribed pancreatic enzymes with meals. These enzymes replace what the pancreas can't produce, and it improves digestion and nutrient absorption. Now, let's pause for our next NCLEX Quick Check and let's see if you can answer these questions. How is pancreatitis pain described? It's left upper quadrant or epigastric pain that radiates to the back. What dietary status is indicated for acute cholecystitis and pancreatitis? That's NPO status, because eating stimulates the gallbladder and pancreas, so NPO status reduces symptoms and allows for healing. What life-threatening respiratory and electrolyte complications should clients with pancreatitis be monitored for? Acute respiratory distress syndrome, or ARDS, and life-threatening hypocalcemia. So now you are ready for questions on cholecystitis and pancreatitis when taking the NCLEX.